All right, welcome back. Universities and colleges are a dime a dozen, but some stand out for their unique course offerings or educational approach. The Meridian International or Mint College is offering an innovative approach to education. Now, here to tell us more about it is Hendrik Kiamzon, spokesperson of Mint College. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. This this sounds really interesting. Uh, I mean, we were we were having a uh, quick little chat here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is an all new school, all new university. Yes. Um, that's set to to really change the way we think about uh, yes, education. Yes, um, yes. Where do we start? I mean, what's what's uh, what's Mint all about? Well, uh, one of the easiest things to explain about our school mm -hmm. is we're trying to uh, to push this new system called Education 3.0. All right. Um, just to give you a little history, Education 1.0 is your your traditional setup yep. you know, with the chalkboard, classroom, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, 2.0 is uh, the advent of computers, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the educational setting. Mm -hmm. So sort of computer-based learning, but still in sort of a traditional setup. Right. Uh, education 3.0, um, you know, it goes into student-centered learning. Okay, mm -hmm. so that what that means is uh, you kind of tailor the, uh, the lessons to the students. Mm -hmm. It's not just the teacher dictating, you know, to the class. Mm -hmm. It's also the student telling the teacher, um, this is the way I like to learn, this is my style. Right. Uh, if you look, that's the way kids are these days. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very, they're short attention span, they're being right. bombarded by information. Mm -hmm. And uh, education really needs to adapt. And as you can see, not just in the Philippines, but across the world, um, it's still pretty much education 1.0. Right. And uh, it really needs to evolve to the, uh, the information age. Mm -hmm. uh, other factors of education 3.0 are um, it's technology driven. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, one, th one thing we're doing for the students this year, uh, we're starting in June, okay. our first semester. Uh -huh. uh, every student will have an iPad 2. Okay, now they're they're getting that. Um, That's incentive right there. I want to join. A, I think a lot I of kids want to wanna join just because yeah. of that. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's not so that they can Twitter in class right. or they can get on Facebook. But mm -hmm. it's more so for um, using devices as a technology tool, an educational tool, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, where the curriculums are actually uh, tailored to use devices like uh, an iPad 2, like mm -hmm. a cell phone. I mean, where have you seen schools where they allow you to use cell phones in a class? Yeah. They allow you to use your iPad. Mm -hmm. So um, we're embracing technology and we're saying that these are the devices that kids like to use these days mm -hmm. and uh, why not use it to our advantage in mm -hmm. education. Uh, other uh, aspects of Education 3.0 is that um, it's flex, uh, flexible in, uh, environments for learning. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean just the classroom. Right. So uh, one thing that we're going to do, like 20% uh, of the student's time will actually be spent in classroom. Mm -hmm. The other 80% is divided into um, going into the workplace, right. you know, online distance learning, mm -hmm. group discussions, mm -hmm. project-based mm -hmm. um, project-based learning uh, and, and the such. Mm -hmm. um, now, one thing we're doing with uh, working with companies mm -hmm. is a lot of our deans or the program heads mm -hmm. are actual professionals. Right. So, for example, our head for film mm -hmm. is an actual independent film director maker. Currently practicing. Currently practicing. He's actually based in San Francisco also. Right. Um, he will be uh, spending part of his time here mm -hmm. in the Philippines, part of his time in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, what he also plans on doing is doing a lot of distance learning, uh, distance teaching right. for his students. Mm -hmm. um, he also will take kids to his venues where he will be filming for his next project. So, for example, he has a project coming up in Africa, mm -hmm. and he's going to be picking, of course, uh, some of his top this students. Is getting better and better. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've had two, uh, opportunity to, to learn out in Africa. Um, and I think, uh, like, like you were saying, I mean, uh, distance doesn't really, isn't right. really much of a hindrance because of the right. way the school is set up and, right. and really uh, taking Education 3.0 to heart. I mean, right, it right. really does embrace the, the, that kind of uh, system. Yes. Um, it's interesting interesting though I wanted to touch on uh, the fact that um, you know uh, Mint uh, College or Meridian International um, is a business arts and technology college yes. that's quite a varied uh, yes, yes. field and yes, a varied yes, exactly. uh, curriculum uh, yeah. really uh, why why is uh, why is there this approach uh, there are it's it's two pronged actually the um, the founder of our school mm -hmm. his name is um, Baltazar Andriga or yeah. Balandriga okay. he is uh, very well respected in the educational industry mm -hmm. he used to be the president of UE mm -hmm. but um, he was also a graduate of Harvard MBA he mm -hmm. got a, he was a full scholar there yeah. um, he was the head of SGV's um, IT division right. managing director mm -hmm. and he was actually the one who brought IT to the Philippines mm -hmm. through SGV mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was also the uh, chairman and president of CCP, yep. Cultural Center of the Philippines. 
and um, yet now he's our, our president for our school. Now his background is, if you if you can tell, it's all in business, arts, technology, education. Mm -hmm. And uh, did we miss anything there? <laughs> I mean, that pretty much covers uh, all Co the fields. Covers, really. covers everything. Uh -huh. And and uh, the reason why we also chose those um, programs is because we feel these are the programs that are important for the new economy, the mm -hmm. information age. All right. If you if you notice, you know, kids these days they can do their own movies, they can mm -hmm. do their own graphics. Sure. They're they're entrepreneurs by heart. Yeah. So we feel th these programs will get them prepared for mm -hmm. that uh, that next level, that new economy. Uh -huh. We're seeing some images now uh, sure, of, sure. of what the campus will, will be like. Sure, I mean, sure. um, it, it looks like a beautiful place to yes, to, yes, to yes. And, and study. Uh, looks like it's a very that, that's what I, that's what I wanted to mention to you. Yeah, let's uh, talk about that. We we really focus on the facilities. Mm -hmm. um, if you notice, we don't really have a huge campus. We're mm -hmm. located on a, a space that's about 1,500 square meters. Right. And uh, we felt that we didn't have to, um, you know, deal with the non-core facilities like, let's say, a huge football field or a gymnasium, uh, hu dormitories. These are, are huge capital expenditures for a school. And um, sad to say that, uh, you know, the traditional schools, they need that tuition money to maintain. They have a very high right. overhead cost. But with what we have in a small footprint, mm -hmm. we are allowed to, to focus on the essential facilities. And uh, there's some cost savings there. Well, one thing I wanted to mentioned, it's very important about our school, is with the cost savings, we're um, allowed to give 20% of our student body as full scholars, 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, some other schools might say, oh, well, we're doing that as well. But um, the thing is, if you notice with other schools, the way they get scholars is by getting donations from alumni, right. from endowment money. Mm -hmm. And uh, none of them are able to do it within their own internal system. Mm -hmm. So they really have to seek outside help for those scholars. Mm -hmm. What we're doing with the cost savings that we've experienced with the type of uh, facilities we have, we can actually do that. 20% will be full scholar, 100%. And uh, the other 80% will have some sort of scholarship, partial or, or you know, partial assistance in that uh, respect. All right, so it's, it's, it's sounding better and better, really. <laughs> I mean, uh, what would you say are the strengths uh, of, of uh, Mint? In the terms of the strengths of Mint? Uh, really, it's it's in the way we deliver our programs. Uh -huh. You know, but you wouldn't um, really call yourself, uh, you know, a business-oriented uh, university. You wouldn't say you're strong in the arts. I mean, we cover, we would like to say, so yeah, we'd like to say that we're geared for the uh, the new economy. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, one thing we always like to mention to, to people is how, uh, look at the, the, the top people in technology industries today, Steve Jobs, yeah. Bill Gates, uh, Larry Ellison at mm -hmm. Oracle, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, mm -hmm. all of these people are very rich. Very rich, <laughs> the, the top of their fields, yeah. but they didn't graduate college. Okay. The reason being was that they, they, they were very creative, very well, you're entrepreneurial. You're not to college though, I mean you want to <laughs> no, go no, to no, college. No, 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 this is the point. The point is that once they had these ideas for these business models, Facebook, mm -hmm. Apple, you know, uh, DOS, yeah. Windows, yeah. the college didn't have anything else that they can offer them, mm -hmm. those traditional setups. Yeah. So what we're saying is that we're, we're nurturing those types of students so that if they do come up with ideas like that, mm -hmm. we will embrace it. We will even uh, reimburse their tuition and go into business with them. All so right. who's to say you can't do that with your students? Well, yeah. Speaking of uh, Steve uh, Jobs and Apple, I mean, um, Mint has partnered with Switch and is uh, going to be the first to put up the first Apple Epi, 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 Epi Experience App. Center. Yeah. Apple yeah. Epi Experience Center. Yeah. That's a mouthful right there. For education. I mean, that, mm. sounds, that sounds special. That, that's what's exciting about what we're doing with, with Switch. The owner of Switch, uh, Mr. Ben Liu, mm -hmm. he is an IT expert, uh, IT professional. Uh, not only is he providing, you know, the the equipment for our, mm -hmm. our Apple Store and for our computer lab, he's also the program head for IT. All so right. you can kind of see what we're trying to do there. He's bringing his real world, pro real world experience into the school. Uh, the fir one of the things he's doing, which is the first ever offered in the college setting, is iOS application development, mm -hmm. which is obviously the applications on your iPhone, iPad, I, uh, iPod Touch. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually ongoing now. Mm -hmm. So students are learning how to make iPod apps, iPhone apps, and uh, we want to encourage them to be entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, if they want to go into business with us, we'll, we'll do that. You know, we always have that uh, possibility of doing that. We want to nurture students and nurture their ideas and not let them go after they graduate. All right. This sounds like a very, very exciting development in the field of education. Education 3.0. I wonder if we're ready. Thanks for sharing. Uh, if people want to get a little bit more info, yes, where, where yes. Can, can uh, you can find us on facebook.com mm -hmm. slash minschool. Uh, our website is mintcollege.com mm -hmm. and our phone number is 223-MINT and we're located in McKinley Hill mm -hmm. uh, in Fort Bonifacio. All right, I'm excited. All right, thank you so much to Hendrik Kiamzon from uh, Meridian International. Thank you, Exciting stuff. Thanks Thank so you much. for having me.